Hi guys, today we're going to be um, making a video to show you how we're going to make an elevation of the breakfast nook wall. So if you see this floor plan is printed on a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet and you will find the breakfast nook wall back here in this corner. Um, so for a standard floor plan, which most of you have, you haven't done anything with this area. Um, then from this interior wall to this interior wall is what we're going to be focusing on. And um, this point to this point is 14 feet. So we have 14 foot by 10 feet, which is the ceiling height. So from floor to ceiling, we have 10 foot. If you did eliminate the pantry area, then go ahead and do your elevation of this interior wall to this interior wall. And um, there's a couple of you that decided to do that. So in that case, that is 17 foot, one half um, times, you still have a 10 foot ceiling height. Okay, and we're going to be doing this elevation at a half an inch scale. Um, I know that we've talked mostly in quarter inch scale, but we're doing half inch scale so it's more fitting for your board. Um, you'll be able to see details, you'll be able to draw in details easier. So we will be using one half inch equals one foot zero inches for your scale. So if you have a scale, um, that's great. I'm going to be showing you um, on a regular ruler. So if you don't have a scale, you'll be able to um, use that very easily as well. Um, so what we're talking about is here at the half inch increments. So you have a half here, one, um, another half here, two, um, another half here, three, you get the idea. So each time you hit the half mark, that equals one foot. Um, so you can definitely use this um, in, instead of an architectural scale if you need to. So in the case of needing um, a 14 foot wall, you would need to, um, you can either count it out, one half would be one foot, this would be two feet, this would go to three feet, this would go to four feet, or um, you can also divide it in half. So if it was a 14 foot wall, that would be all the way to seven inches at half inch scale. So what I like to do, I'm just gonna get a fresh piece of paper. What I like to do is um, use a straight edge of some sort, and some of you will have a um, T-square like this one. Um, some of you may have a drafting board that you borrowed from school or maybe that you bought on your own. Um, Lou, I think you said you picked up one um, somewhere else. So if you have that, by all means, use your parallel bar. Um, but this is good, um, or even if you have a triangle, um, to this is great to be able to make those lines perfectly straight. So um, I just like to line this up with my paper here at the bottom so that I know that I'm making a, a really nice square instead of um, walls that will be a little bit angled. So just for the sake of this going quickly, I'm going to forego using the T-square even though I just told you how great it is. Um, and I'm gonna line the bottom of my ruler up to my paper, which also works. So at seven inches and at the zero mark, that's going to be your floor. And then a 10 foot ceiling at half inch scale would be five inches. So I'm going to line this up. This is where a T-square or a straight edge would be really helpful. Um, I'm going to line up the bottom of my floor to the five inches again, go up to the ceiling height. So those are my two walls, the two interior walls again from this point to this point. If you were making it without the pantry, you would need to make it a little bit longer. 
And then you're just going to connect these lines Don't you love when your lead goes back in your pencil? Um, connect these two lines to make your ceiling. So here is my breakfast nook wall. So if you were looking down on this floor plan in plan view from the sky looking down and then had this propped up behind it, this wall area would be this wall here that you're looking at straight on. There's no angles, no perspectives. Um, it's just going to be a very flat, one-dimensional elevation. So everybody has different furniture. Um, everybody has a different plan, but really, really quickly, if you have something like a table, um, that's here, let's say, and you have a couple of chairs. You might wanna face them in toward each other. Those are really tall legs. And maybe you have a really large piece of art back here in the background, and maybe a lovely chandelier. Let's put some flames on that, get it really going. <laughs> so um, you might have um, a bar cart over here along this wall, and that is, you would just be seeing the side, essentially. You wouldn't be seeing the front of it. So again, you're approximately standing about right here, and you're able to see this wall from your from your view. So, um, you know, you could actually go out to this point right here. So everything that's on this wall in this area is what you want to focus on. So um, if you have um, dimensions that you can look up for uh, your chair height, um, and you can measure out using your scale or your ruler, um, based on half inch scale, equaling one foot. Um, and you have the height of your table base, and then you can kind of um, estimate how thick your tabletop is. That's completely fine. Um, sometimes they'll give you the dimension of the base, if your table has a base. Any dimensions that you can um, pull from your spec sheets, um, or on the website to at least give you this type of dimension. And then you can even um, at home measure what uh, your dining room table seats are at because that's typically a standard. Um, you wouldn't be seeing these back legs unless they were angled, but we're not looking at it that way. We're looking at it straight on. So you'll really just be seeing these two legs, the seat and the thickness, the back, maybe if it has a little cushion, on the back, you would just see a sliver of it. So it's really, really minimal what you would be seeing. I'm gonna add some thickness here to the cushion and some legs here. Maybe there's a little bit of thickness to the legs, but again, you wouldn't see those two back legs. You would see this piece of art, the full frame, and please use a scale or a ruler when you're drawing this out. This isn't really supposed to be sketchy. Um, I'm just doing it quickly for um, you to see, but you would see the frame detail. You would see maybe if there's um, a mat on the art piece and then um, the art here. This is um, a boat on the water. <laughs> So, um, at sunset. <laughs> so, um, you would see the one side, the front side of the chandelier. You're welcome to cut this out. I've had students use an X-Acto knife to go around it. Um, there, some students are really good with sharp scissors. 
um, and you can cut around all of the, det the details and then glue it right on top. Um, if there's bookshelves and you have, um, you know, something like a bookshelf or a bookcase and you have um, some vases or something that there's some ornamental, gra um, ornamental grass in here. Isn't that lovely? Um, if that's something that you don't want to draw, you can cut those out. So um, anything that will help you to be able to get this elevation view of what that wall looks like, um, I'm totally fine with. Also, um, I've included two images of students' work in the sub-module talking about these. So um, look at those. Those are from Liz and uh, Nidra when she was a student. And um, those are really great examples. So have fun with it. Don't stress out. All that's required is a pencil drawing with the use of um, proper measurements and using um, your straight edges so things don't look like they're totally scribbled, okay? And um, if you want to render it, that would be fabulous and it will look so much better on your board. But um, this is all that's required is just the pencil drawing. Okay, if you have any questions, email me. I am available to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.